Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting exam oriented topic Conus medullaris and Corda equina the distinguishing features. Conus medullaris and Corda equina the distinguishing features. So before that we need to know what is Conus medullaris, what is Corda equina. To understand that we will briefly review the spinal cord. The spinal cord segments and the vertebral body they do not correspond to each other because spinal cord ends at the level of L1. Since spinal cord ends at the level of L1, the spinal segments and the vertebral segments do not correspond. The T10 vertebral body is at the level of L1, L2 spinal segments. The T11 is at the level of L3, L4 spinal segments. The T12 vertebral body is at the L5 spinal segment and L1 vertebral body you have the sacral and coccygeal segments. So the spinal cord ends at the level of L1. So the spinal roots for example L1 and L2 they have to take a long course and go to their respective intervertebral foramen. L1 has to go through L, L1, L2 descends down and goes through L2, L3 descends, L4 descends and then goes to L4. Since the spinal cord ends at the level of L1, they have to, the roots have to travel downwards and go to their respective foramen. So here we have two important concepts. One, the spinal cord ends at the level of L1 and L1 contains the sacral and coccygeal segments. Below L1, they are nothing but spinal nerve roots. There is no spinal cord. So, important to remember are just two points. One, the spinal cord ends at the L1. So, the tip of the spinal cord is at the level of L1 containing the sacral and coccygeal segments. Below the L1 vertebral body, they are all the nerve roots. So, below L1, that is L2, contains the L2 root. L3 root, L4 root. So if you have understood this, conus medullaris and corda equina is very very easy. So conus medullaris is nothing but the spinal cord at the level of L1. That is the tip of the spinal cord at the level of the L1 containing the sacral and coccygeal segments. So the conus medullaris is nothing but the tip of the spinal cord at the level of L1 containing sacral and coccygeal segments. That means it is S1 and below. Corda equina is nothing but the spinal roots in the form of a horse tail below the L2 vertebra. That means L2 spinal nerve roots and below. That's it. So conus medullaris is at the level of L1, the spinal segments being S1 and below. The corda equina is at the level of L2 vertebral body. So the spinal nerve roots are L2 and below. So conus medullaris contains only the sacral segments whereas corda equina contains lumbosacral segments. Another important concept to be understood is that conus medullaris is at the tip of the spinal cord. So conus medullaris is a part of the central nervous system whereas Corda equina are the spinal nerve roots. So they are peripheral nervous system. So corda equina is lower motor neuron type. Corda equina is lower motor neuron type. Whereas conus, medullar, conus medullaris is predominantly upper motor neuron type because it has got, it is the part of the spinal cord. In fact, it is a terminal portion of the spinal cord, but it has also got anterior horns and therefore if they involve it can also produce element signs. So conus medullaris is predominantly upper motor neuron but can have lower motor neuron signs but corda equina is only lower motor neuron type. 
conus medullaris contains S1 segments and below. The corda equina contains L2 and below. So corda equina are lumbosacral segments, whereas spinal, whereas conus medullaris is sacral segments. So if we understand these basic concepts, understanding conus medullaris and corda equina are easy. Right. Now having understood, so this is conus medullaris at the level of L1. So this is corda equina at the level of L2 and L2 vertebral body and below. L1 vertebral body opposite to that, that spinal cord, the tip of the spinal cord is conus medullaris. L2 vertebral body and below the spinal roots are corda equina. So conus medullaris corresponds to L1 vertebra, corda equina corresponds to L2 vertebra. Fine. Having understood this, now it becomes very, very easy to find out the differentiating points between the conus medullaris and corda equina, the distinguishing features. As I said, the conus medullaris is at the level of the L1 vertebral body, whereas the corda equina is at the level of L2 vertebral body and below. If we take the spinal level, the conus medullaris contains the sacral and coccygeal segments S1 and below. The corda equina contains the lumbosacral segments L2 and below, the nerve roots. Presentation. Conus medullaris, since it's the tip of the spinal cord, since it is spinal cord lesion, it presents suddenly. For example, trauma. Trauma to the spinal cord. It presents suddenly. And since it's a tip of the spinal cord, small part, it is bilateral in its presentation. Whereas corda equina, these are the roots. So it could be a disc prolapse or it could be tumor. So they present very slowly. They develop very gradually. Since they are roots, roots go bilaterally on both sides. They present in an asymmetrical manner. So conus medullaris, tip of the spinal cord, bilateral and symmetrical and it is sudden in onset. Corda equina, since they are roots, they are in a diffuse manner. So it is an asymmetrical in presentation, unilateral and since the common etiology is disc prolapse, it is very gradually, gradual in presentation. Right. Next we will come to the radicular pain. Obviously, the conus medullaris is nothing but the spinal cord, so there is no radicular pain, it is spinal cord, whereas these are the roots, L2, L3, L4, L5, so corda equina will have a radicular type of pain, and it is more severe, corda equina, whereas in the spinal cord and the vertebral body, L1 is there, they may have low back ache in conus medullaris, whereas back ache is less in corda equina. Now we will see a very important differentiating point, the motor system. As I said, the conus medullaris is the tip of the spinal cord and therefore it is symmetrical in presentation whereas corda equina is asymmetrical in presentation. When it comes to weakness, conus medullaris is like a UMN type, it is the tip of the spinal cord. So the weakness is less marked, whereas corda equina is lower motor neuron type. So the weakness is pronounced, is more marked. Fasciculations, since it is the spinal cord conus medullaris, anterior horn cells may get involved. There may be fasciculations, but in corda equina, usually there are no fasciculations. Atrophy. Conus medullaris, since it is a spinal cord, there may not be much atrophy, atrophy, but the roots are involved in corda equina, so there may be severe atrophy. So these are the important motor signs differentiation between the conus medullaris and corda equina. When it comes to the reflexes, the deep tendon reflexes, here, since S1 is involved, the ankle jerk may be absent in the conus medullaris, whereas when we take corda equina, both the lumbar and sacral segments are involved. So lumbar segments L3, L4 can get affected, so there will be absence of knee jerk 
as well as ankle jerk S1. So in cordus conus is only the ankle jerk may be absent, whereas cord ipin of both the knee jerk and ankle jerk may be absent. When it comes to the plantar response, since the conus medullaris is S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, some amount of deficit may be there above S1 and therefore plantar may be extensor. Babinski sign in, in conus lesion when it is slightly extends above S1, rostral to S1. Whereas in corda equina, since they are roots are involved, plantar is absent, S1. Plantar will be absent. Right. Now let's come to the sensory part. The area involved in conus medullaris is sacral, predominantly sacral. S3, S4, S5. And therefore the sensory loss is perianal. The sensory loss in conus medullaris is perianal. Whereas in corda equina, even the lumbar segments are also involved. So it is a saddle type of anesthesia, saddle type of sensory loss. Again, conus medullaris, since it's a tip of the spinal cord, it is a symmetrical sensory loss. Whereas in corda equina, since the roots are involved, it is an asymmetrical sensory loss. The laterality, the sensory loss is bilateral in conus medullaris, whereas it is asymmetrical and maybe unilateral in corda equina. The sphincter disturbances, the bladder disturbances and the fecal disturbances are early in the conus medullaris, but they are a late feature in corda equina. Likewise, importance is also early in conus medullaris lesion and importance is a late feature in corda equina. The etiology of conus medullaris is usually trauma. Sometimes it could be tumors like ependymoma. Where the etiology in corda equina is usually a disc prolapse, but sometimes it could be tumors like neurofibroma or schwannoma. So these are the important differentiating points between conus medullaris and corda equina. So if you understand these points, it's very easy to appreciate the differences. Conus medullaris is the tip of the spinal cord at the level of L1. So it is S1 spinal segment and below. And corda equina is at the level of L2 vertebra. So it is L2 spinal nerve segments, root segments and below. So this is L1 conus medullaris. Corda equina is L2 and below. Conus medullaris is a part of the spinal cord. So there will be UMN signs. Sometimes there will be LMN signs. Whereas corda equina is a part of peripheral nervous system. So there are only LMN signs. So this is conus corda. They are so close together. So usually there could be a combined lesion of conus and corda because they are so close. So we know these points. We can confidently approach conus medullaris and corda equina. So if we understand these concepts, it becomes a very simplified approach to conus medullaris and corda equina lesion. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my video. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post onto my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.